about uh, some familiar. Probably everybody in here just about could, could probably quote what we're going to talk about today. But it's something that's important. We're going to talk from Matthew chapter 6 and from Luke chapter 11. If you'd like to turn in your Bibles to Matthew 6, we're going to start in just a minute. But let, me, let me begin by, by asking, at, or, or by saying uh, this. Uh, or by asking this. Let me ask you this question. How, how many sermons have you ever heard on prayer? I think that if you think about it for a second, you might say what I'd say. Not that many. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, 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 in about 15 years of, of 16 years of, of, of preaching, I don't think I've ever preached one on prayer. And, and I don't know if I've heard but just maybe a few sermons on prayer. And let me tell you why I think that is. Number one, it's hard to preach. <laughs> Preaching on prayer is, is hard to preach. As E.W. Dameron would say, uh, I've wallowed this one today. <laughs> trying to, trying to get down what I want to say. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. I don't think there is any, and listen to what I say. I don't think there's any more important thing, any more important tool for a Christian than prayer. Amen. And we're going to talk about prayer this morning. There's an old quote that says, Satan tries to limit your praying because he knows that your praying limits him. Do you believe that? If, if, if we had, with the rising uh, a price of fuel, uh, of gas, of petroleum, in this country, and it's something that changes every day. It'll go down for a little bit. You wake up the next morning, it's back up again. Uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just up and down, but it's high. With the rising cost of fuel in our country, if you had a free, and I say free, never-ending supply of the best fuel available, would you take advantage of it? That's a no-brainer, isn't it? If we in this world, in this country, in this county, in eastern Kentucky, if we had a supply that we could go fill our cars up, or our trucks up, or our vehicles up, with a never-ending supply that's free of the best gas, there's no reason why we wouldn't use it. It's a no-brainer. But you know, sadly, many Christians do not take advantage or do not use what they've been given, the blessing they've been given, take advantage of the most important, most powerful gift that God has given us. Let's think about this for just a second. We as Christians, we can actually talk to the Creator of the universe through His Son. Have you ever thought about that for a second? Almost 7 billion people in the world. But, and we can talk, we can have a conversation with the Creator of the universe, Christian. And, and he, hears, he hears every, every word. That's amazing to me. But you know, I feel like prayer is something, and that's why I'm, I'm preaching it today. I feel like prayer is something that should be taught. And I think it's something that should be taught from the pulpit. And I'm going to tell you why I think that's true. Because it's important, my friends, that every Christian understands that there are ways and things that we should be praying. But there's also things and ways that we should not pray. So I ask you this, this morning, 
If you have a pen with you or pencil, write a few things down. Because I think this is important. And if you don't want to write it down, go ahead and write it down. <laughs> because I think these are things that we can use in our lives to help our prayer life. Now let me say this, and I'll say it from the beginning. I have never, that I can remember, ever preached a sermon that wasn't directed to myself. Because I can tell you, although I've gotten better over the last few years, although I've made a conscious effort to get better, I can tell you right now, my prayer life needs some work. And I think that everybody in this room, if you were honest, you would say that yours does too. I don't think we take advantage of this blessing enough. So today, I want to focus on a lesson to help us learn to appreciate the great blessings we have in prayer and also how we can pray more effectively. And the bottom line of the whole lesson is this. And I think you'll agree with me when we finish. There are ways and there's manners in which God wants us to pray. But before we start the lesson, I want to clear one thing up with you. I am by no means today going to try to tell you what or how to pray. Okay? Because we know there's different types of prayers. Sometimes your prayers are limited by time. Sometimes you may be traveling. Sometimes you may have something. You say a quick prayer. Or sometimes there may be prayers that we say in, in, in corporate worship service, in worship service. If we pray for the fruit of the vine, if we pray for the cup, and, I'm sorry, the, the bread and the cup, we should pray specifically for those things. If someone asks you, will you say a prayer for the me or for this circumstance, we should focus on, on that. Okay, I understand there's, there's different types of prayers in the way we say prayer, but what I want you to understand this evening is God has given us, through His Word, patterns that we should use in our prayer life. And I'm going to look at the text from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. And we're also going to look at Luke chapter 11 in a thing that we may call, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, that we may call the Lord's, the Lord's Prayer. Now, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but most scholars... And, 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 and I, I'm not a scholar, but I agree with them. Most scholars say that the, the text in Matthew chapter 6 and, and Luke chapter 11 are, Jesus says basically the same thing in response to talking about prayer, but most scholars will agree it's two separate occasions. Now there's some that will, that will say that Luke 11 and Matthew 6 is talking about the same instance. But most say that it's, it's two separate things. But both of them are very early in the ministry of Jesus Christ. They both share the same message. And it's passages that are often referred to as the Lord's Prayer. Now let me ask you, let me ask you a question. First of all, let me say this. It's not really the Lord's Prayer. But let me ask you a question. Is it wrong to call it that? We're going to talk about that just a little bit later. But actually, what we're going to look at is, is, is better termed the model prayer. When Jesus is, is, is provoked or Jesus is asked to, Lord, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. And he gives them an example of how they, of how they should pray. And I would say that many of us would say this morning, if, if the truth be told, Many of us would say this morning that our prayer life is not what it should be. First of all, shame on us. But second of all, prayer works. Do you believe that? Amen. Prayer works. James said in James chapter 5, beginning in verse 16, he says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. He says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective, fervent prayer, the effective, fervent prayer, James said, of a righteous man 
avails, avails much. Let's look at these two passages from Matthew 6 and Luke chapter 11. It, we all could probably quote it. But let's, let's look at this. In Matthew chapter 6 beginning in verse 5, Jesus is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. He's teaching them some things that shook up the world. But in Matthew chapter 6 beginning in verse 5, He said, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Surely, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Luke chapter 11, we see a, a similar passage. In Luke chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying, speaking of Jesus, as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. But we also, for we also forgive everyone who's indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Let's pray. But Father, we thank you for this day. We recognize you, Heavenly Father, as the creator of the earth. We know, dear God, that as we go through our lesson this morning, dear God, that we are going to take uh, words uh, straight from your Son who, who gave us a, a pattern for our prayer. We pray, dear God, that we will use the, uh, the pattern that we've been given to increase our prayer life, to increase prayer that you find uh, pleasing. Dear God, we pray as we go throughout this message today that if there's one here who's outside of you, that today would be the day they would remember or recognize the fact that they're outside of you. Make that decision before it's everlastingly too late. Watch over us and guide us. Have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins and forgive the sins of the speaker, which are many. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 11 and in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus is prompted to talk about, about prayer. In Luke, he's asked, Lord, teach us to pray. And he, he gives them an example. In, in Matthew's version, or in, in, in Matthew chapter 6, he's in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. He's talking about things you shouldn't pray. <laughs> And then he turns around and tells them how, how they should pray. And I'm going to use both of those passages a little bit today. But I want to tell you that the goal of this lesson should be this. To look at what Jesus said about prayer and apply it to our lives. First of all, Jesus said that we shouldn't pray like hypocrites or Gentiles. Now what did he mean when he said that? Don't pray like hypocrites. Or don't pray like Gentiles. Jesus explained about the hypocrites. He said that their prayers were from their lips, but not from their, their heart. See, Jesus said that hypocrites, and he's speaking of the Pharisees mostly here. He said they pray to be seen by men because they want everybody to see how, how religious they are. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus said this, Hypocrites, speaking to the Pharisees, hypocrites, well did I say, Isaiah prophesied about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth 
and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see, Jesus said that hypocrites, the hypocrites prayed for one specific reason. And that reason was to let people see how religious that, that they were. To let people see how religious they were. Remember the Pharisee and the tax collector from Luke 18? It says that two men went up to the temple to pray, the temple courts to pray. One of them was a, a Pharisee, a religious leader of the time, and the other was a, a tax collector, the most hated people, or one of the most hated people of the time. A religious leader and one of the most hated people. And so the Pharisee stood because there was a crowd so the temple courts were outside and people gathered there. And the Pharisee's praying to be seen by men. Lord, he says, please, I'm so thankful that I'm not like other men. Or even this old tax collector. I do the things you want me to do, God. I'm just so happy that I'm not like this guy. And it says that the tax collector said, was beating on his chest. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus says, which one do you think went away justified? The one who had the humble, the humble heart. So Pharisees, hypocrites, Jesus said, spent their time praying to be seen by men. He said about the Gentiles. He said, Jesus said, don't use vain repetitions like the heathen or like the Gentiles. Do. Of course, Gentiles being non-Jews, idol, idol worshippers, people who were who were outside of, 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 of living in God. What do you mean by that? The Gentiles would actually pray to their false gods in a repeating pattern. And this is what Jesus is, this specific thing is what Jesus is, is addressing here, hoping to aggravate them into giving in. In other words, those who worship idols, the idol worshipers, will pray to their false gods the same thing over and over and over and over again. Let me give you an example. This is a crude example. But Lord, give me a car. 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 Over and over and over again, hoping that they would aggravate these false gods into answering. And Jesus said, don't do that. Don't pray these vain repetitions over and over again trying to talk God into doing something for you. Now let me, let me say something about that. Don't confuse error. Don't confuse repetition with persistence. There's, there's two things that are completely different of each other. You know, when you have a concern, when you are, are lifting up a prayer to God about a concern, Whatever that concern may be, whenever you have a prayer, I ask that you, every time you pray, you mention it. That's not what we're talking about when we talk about the vain repetitions. The vain repetitions we're talking about the heathen would just say something over and over and over and over again, hoping to wear their false god out. And when we pray, if we have concerns, we need to continually lift those concerns to our Heavenly Father. There's a big difference between those two things. But here's the lesson. If you pray to let everybody see how religious you are, as the, as the Pharisees, as the hypocrites did, or to let everyone hear how good of a talker you are, Jesus said, don't expect any other reward other than that. He said, because they already have their reward. Because they desire to be seen by men, and they're being seen by men. Here's the first and the foremost principle of prayer. If you Heed this one piece of advice in prayer. Everything else will fall into place. Prayer is all about attitude. If you approach our Heavenly Father with the right attitude, all of these other things are going to fall in place. You know, the passages that we read this morning, Jesus intended those passages to be a model for our prayer. Now let me ask you a question. I've already mentioned it once. In order, let me make a statement. Jesus never intended for this prayer, Lord's Prayer, as we, as we call it, or as, it, as it's called, He never intended that to be a set prayer. But let me ask you a question. And I want you to pay attention to this. Is there anything wrong with repeating the Lord's Prayer? I would say no. 
But let me tell you a couple things about it. Number one, you better be real careful to mean what you say. Don't just use it as, oh, I've memorized this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be. And don't just repeat it. Because when you pray to God, you make sure everything you're saying to Him, you understand what you're saying. Now let me ask you something else. Well, let me tell you something else, by the way. Did you know that there's a couple of things in the Lord's Prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer that are not necessarily things we should pray today or how we should pray today? Let me give you a couple of examples about that. Here's the first one. We should no longer pray your kingdom come. Because when Jesus taught this model of prayer, when He gave this example of the model of prayer, the kingdom had not been established. See what? A.D. 33. See, the, the kingdom is now established on the earth. It's its church. We're in the kingdom. And when Jesus said, your kingdom come, He was telling them to pray for the kingdom to, to come. Well, the kingdom's already here. Colossians 1 and verse 13. Paul said, he, he, speaking of Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of His Son, His Son's love. We are that kingdom. We're in that kingdom. And you know what? The king's coming back one day. Amen? Amen. We're in the kingdom. So when we're praying... Let's be real careful not to use things that we don't really need to say. The other thing is this. Do you notice something about the Lord's Prayer, we'll call it, that may be different than what we should do? We are to pray as Christians, as New Testament Christians, we are to offer our prayers in the name of Jesus. You see, God or Jesus could pray to His Father because He was Jesus. But our prayer is to be offered in the name of Jesus. And it's through Jesus that we, that we pray. Colossians 3.17 Paul said, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Well, let me ask you a question. What should we pray what things should we say? Now I want to remind you again that I'm not telling you what to pray. Jesus is not telling you what to pray. But what He is telling you is how to pray. The things that we should say in our prayers. Keep in mind that the things I'm getting ready to tell you real quick right now are things that should be part of our prayer life on a daily basis. Does that mean we're going to cover everyone on every prayer? No. But we need to make sure that we focus our prayer life, Christians, on the things that Jesus told us. We should focus them on. Let's talk about that real quick this morning. First of all, prayer should be used to show respect to God. Because remember, Jesus said, this is how you pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. You see, God is our Father and we're His, His children. And we need to understand that prayer is a blessing. An exclusive blessing that we have from being children of God. Ephesians 1.3 Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So number one, prayer should include Reverence to the awesomeness of God. The second thing, prayer should acknowledge the kingdom on earth and our obedience to it. Jesus said, your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know what we should pray for? We should make sure that our prayer includes the king, the church. We should make sure that we pray for the church local. We should make sure that we pray for the church universal, its leaders. But most of all, we should pray that Jesus or, or that God's will will be will be done. 
So we should pray to show God respect. We should pray for the kingdom. We should pray, number three, for our petitions. In other words, there's a place that we ask Him what we want. Or, or you know, we lift up prayers on behalf of, of whatever. You, you, there's a place there because Jesus said, for, uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. You see, there's a place in our prayer to ask God what we desire, the reasons that we're um, more than likely praying to Him. But be careful that we don't make it all about, the, uh, uh, about us. And I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second. There's a place for us in prayer. You know the gimme, 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 gimme. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. There's a place for that in prayer. But we need to make sure that we limit it. And number four, Jesus said that we should pray, our prayer should contain pleas for forgiveness, pleas for help during times of temptation. Jesus said, pray like this, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You know, we sin that. Sin that. And we should make sure that our prayers contain petitions. To God, forgive us our daily sins and help us through our weaknesses. And lastly, our prayers should recognize God's power. For thine is the kingdom, for yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. We should recognize who's in charge. Those five things that I mentioned are things that Jesus said that our prayers should contain. Does every prayer need to contain those things? I would say no. When you pray for the cup, and when you pray for the, uh, uh, the bread, you, 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 those prayers should be specific. When somebody asks you to pray for them, you pray for them. You pray for their need. But you make sure that your prayer life contains the things that Jesus said we should be praying about. Let me give you real quickly some things that we should avoid in prayer. First and foremost is the me syndrome. It's not about us. So don't make it all about us. Let me give you a challenge. I think I've said this before. But I, I, I try this sometimes. Try to pray one whole prayer without using the words me or I. Try that. When you go home today, when you lay down tonight, whatever you do, Try to say a prayer and don't use the words me or I. Because many times, I think you'll agree with me, we may start off a prayer with the best intentions, but pretty soon we get to me, 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 me. I, 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 I. <clears throat> Try to say a prayer without using the words me or, or I. The me syndrome. The other thing we should avoid is, is bargaining or deal making with God. We should never think that we're even close to being capable of making a deal with God. We should recognize the fact that we are completely in subjection to Him. And His will will be done. Ask those petitions, but avoid, avoid deal making. You know, real quickly, there's an extra thing that I think the model prayer teaches us from, from uh, Luke chapter 11 and Matthew chapter 6. And here's that extra thing. Did you know the model prayer is only about 65 words? When Jesus told His disciples how to pray, the example that He gave them from Matthew, anyway, it's a little bit longer, and Luke, is about 65 words. So what does that mean to us? Get to the point. Get to the point. The Word of God says that Jesus, or, or, you know, that God knows what we need before we even ask Him. Prayer should be simple. Prayer should be direct. And in closing, I want to give you one thing that I think will help us all. I've tried to do this over the last few years. I want you to remember something. I want you to remember ACTS, A-C-T-S. And when you pray, try to incorporate A-C-T-S into your prayers. A, 
adoration. Give God the words and the blessings and the thankfulness He's due in your prayer. A. C. Confession. Confess your sins. We, we all sin, and that sin must be dealt with. T. Thanksgiving. You thank God for His daily blessings. And S. A C T S. Supplication. There's room in prayer to tell God what we need, what we desire, the things that we pray to Him. Use those things. There's one more thing I want you to know in closing. John 9.31 is a pretty plain verse. John 9.31, Jesus said, Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does His will, He hears Him. Now Jesus Himself said that God does not hear <coughs> sinners. Now, He hears the words, I'm sure. He knows everything. What does it mean when the Bible says that God does not hear sinners? What does that say about some who might say you can pray yourself into salvation? See, the Bible says God does not recognize. That's what, that's what the word means. God does not recognize a sinner. Prayer. So what does that say, my friends, about a so-called sinner's prayer? tells me that there's a lot more to it than that. If you're here this morning, I want you to know that the Bible teaches plan. The plan of salvation. The Bible teaches plain that we are all lost. That we're all outside of Christ. The Bible teaches plainly that if you're outside of Christ, there are things that we've done as Christians. There are things that you must do in order to obey God in the way He would have you do. The Bible says plainly that if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that you can confess your sins before men, that you can repent of those sins. That you can quit doing them. You can be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. And you can be raised to walk in newness of life. Knowing that you've done the things that the Word of God tells you to do. Now why did I talk about prayer today? It's been on my mind a long time. Because I think that it's a tool that we must use as Christians. It's a tool that we must use more than we've ever used it before. We live in a world that's fallen apart. We live in a world of broken homes. We live in a world of broken relationships. We live in a world of sin. We live in a world that's going down the drain. We need to make sure that we use the gift that God gave us of prayer as Christians, as prayer to, to lift up our country, lift up those who are outside of Christ, lift up all those things to God, knowing that that's what He desires us to do. Now, my friends, there's nothing more important that I could ever tell you than this. If you're lost, why not get right today? If you're lost, why not come today and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? And the Bible says many times, matter of fact, the word pray is mentioned over 600 times in the Bible. And the Bible says if, if you obey the gospel, you have an avenue 
to Jesus Christ, or, or to God through Jesus Christ through prayer. Why not get that fuel? We need that fuel. Our tanks are low. This country's tanks are low. And if, if Christian people don't do Christian things in a Christian way for God, who in the world is going to do anything? It's all about serving God. It's all about doing His will. If you're here this morning and you're outside of Christ, we're going to sing a song right now. And you have the opportunity to obey the gospel this morning before it's everlastingly 